Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a Gap ad from scratch. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find Flurn on Twitter, at Flurn, and on Facebook, at Flurn as well. We're doing part one of a two-part episode today. I'm showing you guys how to make a Gap ad. We're doing it from scratch. So uh, basically we're gonna bring bringing a bunch of different images together and uh, in this image, episode we're gonna be cutting a lot of people out well it's the same person we're just gonna do it over and over again and uh, assembling it and then in part two I'm gonna show you guys how to actually bring the whole ad together so let's get into it our images are right here and uh, basically to get everything that you need together what I've done is gone to file down here to scripts and load files into stack Then you can hit browse and choose whatever files you'd like to put together in this case I'm just choosing a few of these and hit OK and it'll bring them all together so what we're going to do now is basically cut our subject out and we're going to do this from each individual layer and then we're going to worry later about you know what we're actually like want to uh, where we're going to put each of the layers so for now i'm just going to be cutting everything out since we shot berkeley on a, or photographed berkeley on a, a gray seamless backdrop and uh, she's just awesome we photographed her on a gray seamless backdrop all i'm going to do is use my magic wand tool here and then i'm going to click right outside i'm not going to try to select her doesn't make a lot of sense. It's better to select the outside and then invert the selection. So we're gonna select the outside. You can see it's just a little bit easier there. All right, and I'm just holding down shift a couple times to kind of refine my selection. So once she's like relatively well cut out, um, just to add to that selection, cause I, I don't want any of this, like I don't need all this other stuff in the background visible as well. We're just gonna grab my lasso tool. I'm gonna hold down shift and that's gonna help me add to the selection. And we're just gonna select all that stuff out and then we're gonna select all that stuff out okay so let's just put a layer mask on there now and you can see it made her invisible so we just need to hit command i which will make our it'll invert the layer mask and then she'll be visible so hit command i and then she's visible so now she's on her own layer and you can see you can put her in front of other people and things like that and it's just gonna look good so we're gonna do that for a couple different layers so here comes our other layer magic wand tool just w for the magic wand tool you don't need to use any fancy, there's like a magnetic lasso tool and all that stuff like that. You just don't need to use that stuff. Um, use the easiest, I would say in Photoshop, it's just best try to grab like the easiest tool you know how to use and if that does the job, then it does the job. <laughs> so don't try to make things too complicated on yourself. All right, I'll hold down Alt or Option and you can click on a layer mask and that's the same as adding an inverted layer mask. We're gonna do the same thing here as well. So W for the magic wand tool, and we're just selecting her out. So you can see if you do photograph someone on like gray seamless or whatever, cutting them out uh, really should not take that long. And um, you know, everyone, everyone has their own methods of cutting people out. So if you have one that works for you, um, that's awesome. This one works for me and um, that's why we're using it here. All right, let's uh, go ahead and select that out as well. Alt or option, click on that layer mask and we're good to go. All right, and again, back with my magic wand tool. Okay, and we'll bring this in. So this won't take too long, but basically what we're doing is we're cutting everything out now, and then we're gonna be arranging everything together. So when you're working on an image like this, especially like a composite type of image, um, it's really best to just get your image about how you want it to be. You know, like get it relatively close, do your composite work up front, and then you can actually work on making the image come together. So if anyone's you know, curious, like do I do uh, you know, retouching first or compositing first? What's the order of things? Um, I always recommend doing your compositing first. That'll get it to like the base image and then you work up from there. All right, hold Alt or Option and click on that too. So now what we need to do is we basically just need to decide what the order of our subjects we wanna do. And you can do this however you'd like to do. Um, I'm gonna do this like here on a, uh, just like this. I, I don't even need to see the backdrop to see how these subjects are gonna be interacting with each other. So we're just kind of like bringing everything together and uh, seeing how they all work together. Now I know it's not perfect just yet, but it doesn't need to be. All right, like I'd like to bring her down and you can kind of change your layer order and this is going to um, just kind of affect, you know, who's visible what, where. Let's bring her up so she's kind of like, there we go, right above there. And uh, when moving these layers around, you can hold down the command or control key and that'll click on any of these layers that you want. All right, and we'll bring her right about there. And 
let's see, I'm gonna bring her down. I'm gonna hit Command T on here and just make the, her just a little bit smaller as well. Cause I kind of have like, there we go. We have like a nice progression. I'm gonna make her a little bit larger. I mean, it's the same girl, just, I'm gonna make that instance of her a little bit larger. Cause I kind of like the progression that we've got going on. All right, and then let's bring this up to the top. There we go. And that looks pretty cool. And maybe I can bring this leg behind the other leg. I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. So what I'm worried about, well, I'm not worried, but <laughs> what I'm spending time on right now is basically how everyone's, um, you know, interacting with one another and the spacing and everything like that. So I'm not paying too much attention to the backdrop. It's just a little too early to do that. There we go. That looks good. Let's go ahead and bring them all right about there. And um, yeah, we're off to a good start. So now we need to bring in the backdrop. So I'm going to choose my bottommost layer, which is this layer, and just turn my layer mask off because we don't we don't really need that layer mask to be on anymore um, because it's you know she's going to be now standing on the backdrop. If I hold down Shift and click on some of these other layer masks, you can see it's going to make those backgrounds invisible or visible as well. So we're going to do a combination of a couple different backdrops here. So we've got everyone and. They look great. I mean, it, it looks like they're coming together, which looks pretty cool. They're just going off into, into the nothing there. So on this backdrop, we're just going to hold down Shift and click on that, which turns it off. And uh, then we're going to turn this backdrop off as well. So I'm going to hold down Shift and click on this layer. But seeing what it does, I don't necessarily want to turn it off. Maybe what I'm going to do instead is just grab my brush tool and then paint white here at you know like 50% opacity or something like that. And then that's just going to allow a little bit more of that backdrop to come through. All right, so I'm just painting it from, there we go, from this area on leftwards. I don't necessarily need anything else visible. Okay, and then here, what we want to do is paint away from the other version of Berkeley. That's my goal. Okay, and if you need to get a little bit more well-refined, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in just a little bit. Okay, and if you do have something like this where it's kind of like fading in between uh, a light area and a dark area, don't worry too much about that because we can use a really cool trick that I'm gonna show you guys in just a little bit on how to take care of that. Okay, there we go. So that's a decent fade going on. Now, we might need to do the same thing here with her with this version of Berkeley, or we could use, well, that version of Ber Berkeley won't work. So we're gonna use this version of Berkeley on this layer mask again. I'm just gonna paint white. <laughs> make sure you're on your layer mask. I'm gonna paint white over here to make all of this visible because I want it all to be as though it's on one large piece of seamless. And we just didn't use a piece of seamless that was that large. So um, now we, we're just doing a slightly different technique to get us there. Okay, so we've got, Basically what we've got, what we want here. Let me just go ahead and crop in with the crop tool so we can start working on getting, there we go, everything together. And that looks really good. Let's just, sorry, I'm gonna recrop this. Um, all right, composition, especially for this type of thing is really, really important. So you just wanna spend a little bit of time just making sure you've got something that really looks good. All right, and I'm gonna uncheck that delete crop pixels because if I need to later on, I can still go in and change that. All right, and that looks really, really good. So what we're gonna do last step in part one is I'm gonna work on blending these together a little bit better. So here we can see we have a dark backdrop and that's kind of, or this light backdrop here, that's kind of fading into this dark backdrop right over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer. We're gonna go down to curves I'm gonna hit Option Command G, which is gonna clip this, so it's only gonna affect this layer. And now I can just click right here in the middle and just drag that down a little bit. There we go. So you can see the backdrops actually blend in pretty well together. Now, Berkeley's still too dark, not a big deal. All you have to do is on your regular layer mask, I'm just gonna paint black on that curves adjustment layer where Berkeley is. There we go. And if you wanted to just load in your original selection, you could do that as well. Like you can, I'll just show you. Shift click on there. You can hit W for your magic wand tool. There we go. So I can select all this stuff out, invert my selection, and then just say, you know what, on this curves adjustment layer, I don't want 
to be painting that area, just the backdrop. There we go. So we're just making our backdrop just a little bit darker. And now we can go in and affect and adjust our darkness. So if it's too dark, you just click the up arrow a couple times and we should get what we see is like a pretty even fade. That's the goal anyway. Um, I'm doing this relatively quick, as you guys can tell. So if, you know, if it's not perfect here, just spend a little bit more time on it. But that's, that's the goal. All right, and next we have this layer where it's blending in as well. So we can either choose to make this a little bit darker or I can make this a little bit lighter. Let's make this one a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna grab a curves adjustment layer, option command G again to clip that. And we'll just click right there in the middle and I'll just hit the up arrow a couple times. There we go. And it's brighter. So you can see with this layer and that layer, what we've gone is, you know, we've got a transition area a couple times and now we've basically gotten rid of that transition area. So it's really getting us on our way to exactly what we want. Let's just shift click all of these layers together and uh, hit Command G. We'll just double click and just call this Berkeley. All right, so that's basically how we prep this file. That's the end of part one. Join us for part two where we're gonna go in and get a little bit more refined. We're gonna clean up our selections. We're gonna do some color work. And we're gonna drop an ad logo into the image. Thanks so much for watching Florin, guys. I hope you had fun. I hope you have a really good life just watching these videos. Just There's 600 of them now, so I'm sure that that take up just about an entire lifetime of watching videos. Thanks again, guys, and I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Hi, guys. Kat from Flirn here. For more information on our episode, please check out our website at www.flirn.com. Also, check out our latest photo shoots, which include turning a woman into a chocolate bar, making an epic burger, and lighting a hand on fire. If you want a free tutorial, please sign up for our newsletter because it's a free tutorial. It was awesome.